Yo, what's going on, Epic7? I'm Sue, and this is my beginner's guide to Abyss Floor 110. If you're an anime or manga fan, you probably have noticed that Yumiko Jabami of Kakegurui fame is on the thumbnail. She's famous for her line, let's get our gambling freak on, which is exactly what you're going to be doing here in Floor 110 when you face off against Araminta. Now, before we get into Araminta, let's talk about this first floor, which is a ton of RNG in and of itself. You'll be against this, uh, this revulsion guy here he's our boss and he'll spawn a bunch of these pain ads and the thing about these is they hit really hard they have aoe attacks and they can defense break your entire team if you try to kill the ads the boss gets supercharged and probably wipes you so you don't really have any time at all to stall on this first floor so you're going to need like a lucky defense break or two to kind of rush down the boss otherwise you're just going to get absolutely destroyed and if you go into the second floor with low health, that's kind of rough. Because as soon as Araminta spawns in, she does an AoE attack that does some damage. I have absolutely lost characters that have low health as soon as I come into that second floor. So it is paramount that we get off the first floor as fast as possible. Now, what Araminta does outside of that initial AoE attack is not important. Once you get her under 70%, the fight proceeds to its final phase. The thing is, you can't deal damage to her unless you remove her damage reduction first. Now, how do we remove the damage reduction? As soon as she spawns in, she has these three thermal powered energia behind her. I assume many of you have seen that game where there is a ball and three cups and they put the ball underneath one of the cups and then shuffle it and they ask you to choose which cup the ball is underneath. That is what is going on here with these thermal powered energias. Only one of them has the ability to disable the damage reduction. You have to use a single target attack and attack whichever one you think is the correct one. If you guess correctly, awesome. Damage reduction is dispelled. Burst down Araminta, proceed to the final phase of the fight. Guess incorrectly or try to cheat with an AoE attack. You're going to take a lot of damage and a lot of burns, and it's probably going to wipe you just like outright. You're probably just going to lose there on the spot. So you get one guess. If you're lucky and your team is very tanky with good healing, you might get a second guess, right? So, for those of you keeping track at home, two-thirds of most runs of Abyss 110 are instantly over before they even start. Once you get the one-third chance of guessing correctly on the thermal powered energia and you could get araminta under 70 percent she will transform into silver blade araminta and initiate the final phase of the fight she is accompanied in the final phase by two copies of magnar this is the fire spirit altar boss now the magnars do aoe damage and burn alongside of araminta these burns do an incredible amount of damage to you and as long as both Magnars are not in their Dazzled state, which we'll talk about in a second. Anytime you use a non-attack skill, you will get a burn stack on your entire team, which will probably offset any healing you would have gotten anyway. So healing is pretty much a premium, very difficult on the actual second floor until you can Dazzle both copies of Magnar. To Dazzle Magnar, you need to land four critical hits on either of them. Once a Magnar is dazzled, they speed up, but don't really do much of anything. But after a certain amount of time, they will turn back into the regular version of Magnar. So if you do not finish the fight quickly, you will very fi quickly find yourself into in this situation where you will not be able to heal again. The burns might become overwhelming and you will die. So there are two ways to actually deal with this fight. One is a Terranor Guard team, which is what I'm going to show you here in this video. The other is to build a team around Angelic Montmorency if you don't want to play Terran or Guard. So in the testing for this video, I used Raz, Angelic Montmorency, Camilla, and a Lifesteal set version of Commander Lorena. If you would like to play that, that is fine. Just know that that took hours to get a single clear on. The team I'm going to show you here in this video, this one, took like 10 minutes. So... Your choice, right? Just if you don't want to invest in Terranor Guard, 
I, I don't know what to say. Like, you're just wasting your time. So we're going to proceed with this one here. And just know that with the team, how I have it built, it, it should pretty easily clear this floor once you make it to the Silver Blade Araminta phase. Let's talk about who we're playing and why. So, Roz is going to be our main tank. The best tank in all of Abyss PvE here, right? Main reason we're playing Roz is because of Command Strike. Obviously, defense break, guaranteed dual attack, which is super good with Tyrant or Guard or whatever your main damage dealer is. Also, if you have a skill tree leveled, Command Strike gives immunity to himself as well as your highest attack hero, which can help mitigate some of the burns on your team. Arius here is our artifact, health percentage necklace, health percentage ring, and boots our speed. Tamarin is going to be our healer, freely available from connections, you already know. Guaranteed dual attack here on idle mode. Attack buff on Shining Star. Cleanses, heals, the works. Wanderer's Potion Vial here is the artifact. And then you could have health percentage here on the necklace, health percentage on the ring, and boots are speed. If you wanted to play Montmorency, it's going to look something like this, although you want to be faster than where I'm at. 185 does not cut it. You need to be even faster than this, like 210, 220. Health percentage necklace, ER ring, boots are speed, mag tome as the artifact. Here is Camilla, right? The reason we're playing Camilla, in case you're wondering, is Flashing Blade is another copy of Command Strike. Synergizes incredibly well with uh, Terranor Guard, right? Also works well if you're playing with Lorena. Freely available from the game's connections. If you have access to her, Kitty Clarissa is a better character, but that's a Moonlight 4-star. Not everyone has access to her, so I'm not going to recommend her. Now, there's only three stats you care about on Camilla. Speed over 200, Critical hit chance at 85% plus, ideally 100, and effectiveness at 60% plus. If you're on Kitty Clarissa, all you care about is just speed and critical hit chance. Now, as for how I'm playing our uh, right side pieces here, health percentage necklace, health percentage ring, and boots are speed. Now, you could go critical hit damage or critical hit chance on your necklace and attack percentage on your ring, but I find that Camilla risks dying if she gets unlucky and hit or sustain some burns throughout the fight. Her damage to me doesn't matter. Her living matters. That's why I'm going double health percentage. Most people watching my videos don't do their due diligence and are on a level 50 Camilla. So for you guys, definitely health percentage, ring, and necklace. Artifact literally doesn't matter. You can play whatever you want on it. And now finally, we come to the man, the myth, the legend, Taranor Guard. Arguably the best damage dealer in Abyss from 110 onwards. He is exceptional. As good or in some cases even better than Lorena. And on this floor, he is absolutely better than Lorena. If you want to play Lorena, you can use the free lifesteal set along with either a critical hit chance or penetration offset if you have it. Those will work for you. I just find that if you try to play Lorena with Tamarin, you don't have enough sustain. You will often die. So I have to pair her with Montmorency. And that is a significantly slower and harder fight, which opens it up to more RNG. You know, it's already a two-thirds fail chance because of Araminta's floor. I don't want to open myself up to more RNG, which is why I tabled Lorena. Again, I didn't have too many successful clears with her. I had a ton of successful clears with Terranor God over here. That's why we're playing him. Now, if you're wondering why this character is so busted, the S2 Discipline gives him extra dual attack chance. And every time he dual attacks... He gives 25% combat readiness to your entire team. His S1 has a defense break on it. And his S3 is a huge single target nuke that pushes back an enemy by a ton. Essentially, if you have Taran or Guard on a team with Adventure or Roz, Tamarin, who is in idle mode, and a character like Kitty Clarissa or Camilla in the other spot, this passive basically gives you infinite turns. As long as you can keep the loop up with Soul Burning Roz and maintaining idle mode, you don't run out of turns. It's pretty broken. That's why we're playing Taranor Guard here, because once we make it past the two-thirds RNG wall of base Araminta, we have essentially won unless something has gone absolutely terribly wrong. We should very easily be able to dazzle both Magnars and then take infinite turns before Silverblade Araminta even gets to do a damn thing. As for how he's built, Daydream Joker, Joker here on the artifact, uh, critical hit damage here on the necklace, attack percentage on the ring, and attack percentage on the boots. Now that you understand what's going on with the fight, let's get our gambling freak on. 
So here at the start, we want to command strike the revulsion boss here. Pray for a defense break and then watch our combat radius. You'll see Terranor Guard is going to jump up 25%. You can see 98 when he was 73. Fish for a dual attack. Don't get it. Kill two for the attack buff. Now her S1 is a guaranteed dual attack with Terran or Guard. Watch Riles on the CR bar on the left. Kill three. Push back the boss. Don't get it. Defense break, which sucks. So a lot of damage is going to be coming out here. And again, you don't want to have to deal with this level of damage every single one of these waves, one of these attacks. If we were to AoE here, it gives everyone their ultimate, so that's just wiping, so we can't do that, so we have to S1. Skill 2 to heal up. And then pray that Camilla here can actually buy, get us out of this. I'm actually going to soul burn this. Pray for a dual attack. Don't get it. Pray for a dual attack. Don't get it. We said a lot of damage coming out. Let me demonstrate. I'll protect you. Alright. We pray again. Alright, and now we go into the next phase. Look how low Roz is already. That was like average RNG on that first floor. Heal up here. And now, it's time to get our Gambling Freak on. We have to use a single target attack and pick a Lantern. I always choose the bottom one. And you'll see right now if I'm right or if I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, I'm just going to leave this in the video and we'll start over again so you can see what a failed attempt looks like. Alright, that is a failed one there. And you can see a ton of damage. We will try to guess again. We'll try to go for the bottom one again. Don't get it. All right. We are absolutely dead. I will see you guys on the other side here. You must be hot. What are you going to do? Let's try that again, shall we? Defense break the boss. Fish for a dual attack. Got it. Attack. Guaranteed dual. Attempt to push the boss back. Fish for a dual. Don't get it. Lucky, no defense break. Lucky, no defense break. Heal up. Soul burn. Ooh, did not get it. Fish for duel. Fish for duel. Back again. And now here we go with better RNG. Rocked my Roz passive. All right. Let's get our gambling freak on. All right, we got it. Now, it's time to go to work. Want to skill two here while we still have the ability to do so. Go for... Actually, let's not soul burn this. We're going to need to save it for Roz. Roz soul burn. Don't get it. Fish for a duel again. Duel. Alright, and now we go into the Silver Blade phase. Alright, now we want to focus one of the Magnars off the rip. I like to go for the defense buff at first here, but if you are, you know, really in dire straits and you need to get these Magnars dazzled as fast as possible, I won't fault you for going for the Soul Burn on one of these two right off the rip. All right, I'm actually going to idle mode here because I already have immunity from a previous S2. If you don't have immunity, then don't do this or reconsider using the command strike here at the start with Riles instead of the S3. Listen. Now, as you can see here, 
burns on my characters. One got mitigated by Potion Ball. I'm going to do this again. Camilla has two burns now. So we attack one of these. Take a turn. Attack here. That's already three. So we want to save that. We want to start going on this one because it's four apiece. All right. Go here. Got a lucky do uh, one here. So that's going to get dazzled because of the splash. Gonna hit here. Take a turn. That's dazzled. Now, all we do is just burst down Silver Blade because both of these are dazzled. We can he uh, freely heal. Go for a defense break, Soul Burn. S3 for the damage. S2. Go here. Soul Burn, go here. And now, like I said, it's just easy street. Fish for a duel. Don't get it. Basic attack skill. Fish. Soul Burn. Hey, you can see this is the power of Terra Norgard. See how many turns we're taking? It's kind of insane, right? They're both still dazzled, right? Now he's going to have this counter. That's letting us know how long till he gets out of the dazzled state. So another turn here. Should we get started? I hope you're ready. And now you'll notice we have Idol back again. Araminta hasn't really done anything in this phase, has she? Skill two, push up. Basic attack skill. Go one. Soul burn again. Dual attack. And now that Magnar is about to come back out as well, but we're going to make sure we kill it before that actually happens. Soul burn. And just for good measure, I'll just S1 here and end it. And there you go. Abyss, floor 110 in a nutshell. This entire video is just one straight shot. So from my inane rambling from the intro till now, that's the finish line. If you have any questions, as always, let me know down in the comment section below and post other clears because for some reason, the player base is adverse to building three stars. So if you don't want to build Terranor Guard, check the comment section below. See if someone else has come up with a different solution for you. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you all in Abyss Floor 111. Later now.